working a little bit better, guys. Anybody there? Hello, hello. Two thumbs up. People showing up here. Hello. There's some dudes. Alright, so sorry for the uh, technical difficulties, guys. Now, you guys are all in for a... You're getting a special... Whoa. Getting a special treat today because... I actually didn't intend to go live for everybody. This is actually supposed to be just for my Patreon's followers. Uh, but... I forgot to make it private, and then I went live, and all you guys showed up, and then I was like, oh crap, and so I'm not going to cut you off now, it's just everyone gets to be here for this one, this is fun, but in the future, just so you know, this is actually supposed to be a private hangout with all my Patreon subscribers, so anyways, I'm happy to have you guys all here, and I'm going to try and set up these big slabs for you guys to take a look at. I've just been finishing all the quarter sawn oak for my paneling above my fireplace. It's just beautiful. It's got all these beautiful rays and stuff in it. So just got to move that stuff out of the way. Made my own crown molding. Yeah. Look at that grain pattern. Hey, look at those rays. That's going to look sexy above my fireplace. So that goes up on the ceiling. So I'm going to be installing all that today. Man, there's a ton of you guys. What's up, dudes, dudettes? Can't leave a chat. Oh, sorry. Will you do another collab? Well, I sent a little shout out to him in the last video to see if he would uh, be interested in sending me a little piece of Damascus so I could make a folding knife. Um, he said he would send me a piece because in a future billet that he was making. Um, so. Alec being the sort of guy that he is, I'm sure he'll mail me out a chunk eventually whenever he's got an extra piece ready. And then I'm going to make a folding knife as well. So that's kind of collab, kind of. Um, I was hoping that he would have used some of the little chunks of wood that I had sent him. Um, when I built him that chest, I sent him a cool bunch of nice little spalted pieces of wood. I thought he was going to use those to make scales for his knife, but his knife was kind of just a basic metal knife or steel knife. Man, you guys are from all over the place. <laughs> Don't come too close to the camera, no warriors. Yeah. It's not the cat pose that you guys want to see, I get it. I get it. Handsome, but I'm not that handsome. <coughs> so, how's the audio, guys? Can you hear me all right when I'm back over here? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good. Yes, we can hear. All right. So hopefully you're not tuned in to watch me throw my back out. I'm trying to move these monster slabs by myself, but ain't got no one else. So that's how I roll. Okay. It's gonna be fun. Sorry, my dust collection went on there. But 
bump the beam. Oh, I plugged my phone in. I got low battery. Crossing scene. Okay. I think we're charging now. You can leave me a super chat. There's a super chat tab there where you can drop a tip or whatever and leave a question. I'm not going to be able to answer all your questions, but I will try and answer all the super chat questions once we're done taking a look at these slabs. So if you want to leave me a super chat, I greatly appreciate it. It's kind of like tips for your server or whatever at the restaurant. Okay. I'm getting excited about this table. So excited. Now I flattened one side of these slabs so you can see the grain. The, the rough saw, it's hard to see all the beautiful grain in there. I did that months ago, but then it kind of started to cup on me a little bit. It's actually kind of, well, yeah, it still got a bit of a, about an eight cup across the width. I'll give you a close up of the grain here. Let me just flip the camera. Can I flip the camera? See, it's, it's called London Plain. It's also commonly called lace wood. So you can see the beautiful lacy patterns along the edge there. It's got some cool kind of checking going on in it right there. But yeah, lots of beautiful color variation. And then right along the edges, there's like some nice little burly bits and it's got a really, really wild edge on it. I'm not sure how I'm going to cut that up just yet, but I've been looking at a lot of stuff, following a lot of guys on Instagram and uh, thinking about how I'm going to put these slabs together because here's the issue. I could, I could make a dining room table just out of this, um, but it's only like 32 or 30, I think 4, 34 inches across right here. So by the time you put a plate on either side, you got no room in the middle to put any dishes or food or anything like that. Typically a dining room table is like 38 at the small end and then up to 42 inches. Y, which I have down here, but I don't have at this end here. So I was thinking about doing one of those, one of those like river slab tables where they cut the slab and then you turn the live edge inside, and so the live edges are facing each other. It looks like a river bed, and then you put glass over that. And that's kind of cool, but it's also kind of trendy modern furniture style. I don't want my table to look modern. So I'm thinking I might just cut the live edges off altogether, use them for something else, obviously. But uh, the other option is I can try mating. Okay, I'm gonna have to bring the other slab down here. Back, it's not gonna be happy tomorrow. The other slab next to it and see what it looks like down the middle because they kind of have a straight edge on this one side and this side's a bit cray cray.
You guys still see anything? Okay, so how sick would that be to look down your table and see that right in the middle? I'd put glass over that, obviously. I don't know if you guys follow Greg Class and Furniture on Instagram, but uh, that's what he specializes in. He does, he calls it the river, and he puts like tinted kind of blue glass down the middle and just kind of routers, he'll router or route half an inch kind of onto the live edge and then he gets this crazy he gets the glass cut like in the exact shape of that live edge so it looks like this wild riverbed so i don't know if i'm gonna do that but i've got to do something that highlights that kind of cool edge i might bring them together a little bit tighter maybe do something with epoxy we'll see we'll see put some resin in there could do I'd want it to be clear resin so you can see the live edge all the way through, like a window. But yeah, the wood, when it's rough sawn like this, you can't really see the grain nearly as well as when, he, when it's all planed up, so. With lights. So you guys gotta understand that so many trends going on with woodworking nowadays such trendy stuff and the whole goal of my whole goal as a woodworker is not be following the crowd and doing trendy stuff it's to be like developing my own style and it's obviously a style that I want to be timeless so I incorporate as much kind of traditional timeless joinery and woodworking aspects into it as I can yet there's obviously room for you know exploring new things and that's how we kind of come up with all the innovation and modern design and you know somebody obviously was cutting some slabs and said hey what if we turn the live edges in and put glass over it turns out it looks amazing right so you know whether or not that style of woodworking will stay around forever or if it'll be a trend we'll see but typically if something is truly truly beautiful from the beginning, it doesn't go out of style. So for me, I just find like exactly the best way to use these pieces of wood, not waste anything, use up all the scraps. So whatever I cut off, because I want to have a straight edge on the outside of my table, whatever I cut off of each slab, I'm going to use those parts to hopefully build the base or some other aspect of the table, maybe some benches or the backs of a seat or something like that. So nothing with this wood is going to get wasted because it's such beautiful wood. It's all locally sawn here in Victoria. I know where the log came from. I picked it up myself. I milled it myself. Uh, so this wood has a lot of story and meaning. It's been sitting here for years in my shop just waiting for me to build something with it. So grab a drink of water. Anyways, let's, let's check out what's going on with the super chat. All right, Hefe, Silas, what's up, guy? Good to see you here, man. He's one of my Patreon followers. Sorry, I, <laughs> I posted a link on my Patreon and I had to restart the feed, so hopefully my Patreon peeps are here. I'm sorry, guys, I'm just technically 
illiterate when it comes to this sort of stuff. I'm trying to figure it out so that I can do my live streams down here in the shop because this is way more fun than me sitting in front of my computer. Wouldn't you agree? Do, 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 do. So, you guys got any questions for me? I want to talk about what some of you guys are... Some of you guys are... Are interested in talking about. Everyone's just saying, Hey, how's it going? I'm from wherever, which is awesome. There's people from all over the world here, which is nutters. But, um... Actually ask me a question about woodworking, would you? Holy crap. Tell us more about the benefits of you, my patron. What? Maybe English isn't his strong suit. How do you become a patriot or a patron? Um, yeah, I'll just talk a little about that. Because I know people aren't like super into everybody spamming them or asking them to support them on YouTube. People are so temperamental on YouTube. Don't ask for that. No, no, no. Anyways, if you wanted my inner circle and have live hangouts like this every single week where we talk about woodworking, hopefully I'll be working on a project in the video showing you what's going on. Um, these videos are, are an hour every Saturday, and you can go to my Patreon page, which I'll link in the description of this video after it's done. But you can follow it, you can find the link on any of my videos and you just contribute a monthly amount to become part of the inner circle where we do the live hangouts. It's seven bucks a month. Um, but it's basically a hands-on, you can know, ask me any questions, I give you all the information I want, help you through projects or whatever. Um, as well as you can comment directly to me on Patreon and send me pictures and that sort of stuff and I can help you out with projects. So that's what this is all about is just kind of getting the community a little bit more involved obviously you know I need to make a living doing it so yes it costs money it's not free sorry guys we're not a bunch of commies here are we okay you guys the questions are just flying so so fast ever build doors yes I build a set of French doors you can watch that video um, uh, last year I think Turned out pretty well. I built them out of maple, but they swelled a lot in the seasons, partly because the finish I used was shite. I'm so pissed off about that, but I'm gonna wait for them to shrink up a little bit in the spring, and then I'm gonna paint them so that hopefully they're not expanding so much and like binding in the middle, so annoying. Okay, did you finish your chimney? Did you upgrade? Whoa, sorry. Yes, yes, it's coming together. That's what I was talking about at the beginning of this video. I've got all the uh, oak, crown that I made here, as well as I, I took back the plywood, oak plywood, and I built my own solid oak quarter inch thick panels. I'm going to be nailing all that sort of stuff up today, uh, getting the paneling above the fireplace done and ultimately finished. I got the hearth down, I got it grouted. I just have to clean everything with kind of an uh, acidic tile cleaner, get all the mortar and little bits off, and then, and then I'm going to put a sealer on it and it will be finished. A few little scraps of baseboard and the inside of my renovation is finished. Oh, it's happening this weekend. If I have to work right through Sunday, I don't care. Have you finished above the workshop? I know, yeah, just so you know guys, keep asking your questions because they're just scrolling up the screen so fast. I just got my little smartphone going here. So I'm trying to just catch questions as I can. No, I haven't finished above the workshop because obviously the renovation of my house cost an insane amount of money. Um, and I'm kind of really, I'm way, I'm just too far in debt to kind of spend any money on the property. So I'm just kind of trying to finish up what I have with the material that I have. And then eventually, probably maybe next fall, uh, hopefully I've recovered from my debt and paid my tax man his chunk. Ugh. And then uh, if I have any money left over, I'll start working on the suite. It's just still at framing stage. I've got the, the insulation in, uh, the electrical's roughed in, uh, plumbing is partially roughed in. And then once I get some more money, I'll start finishing all that and then start putting all the walls up and, and doing the bathroom and planning the kitchen out and all that sort of stuff. So there's a ton of money that has to go into that suite because I want it to be like, you know, samurai awesome. So, okay, sorry, catch another one here. 
Hey, Sam, I'm a huge fan. I was wondering, would you be a good way to get into carpentry as a hobby while balancing med school and kind of on a budget? Um, woodworking is not for people that are on a budget. <laughs> Unless you just want to build like kind of really small hobby type projects that you can do with hand tools, then it's totally doable. Um, I've got some plans for small projects like a like a open toolbox, you know, that are super affordable on my website. It's this great starter project. It's got a lot of cool joinery in it. It's a bit challenging, um, but it's doable. It's not beyond complicated. I also have a sharpening station slash another kind of Japanese style toolbox. So there's small projects like that where you don't need a lot of wood. You can build it out of softwood if you want, it doesn't matter. Um, and you could cut it all with hand tools as long as the wood's been kind of planed and stuff. So uh, it's all just up to you, you know, whether or not you got the space. But from my experience, woodworking is one expensive hobby. <laughs> That's why I do it full time as a living so that I can make money at it and keep buying wood. Put my shop together, any tips on organizing stuff and tools? Um, my shop is, is an absolute mess, guys. So <laughs> I don't really have a lot of good tips on organization. I have a lot of desires to build cool organization for my shop, but, but um, they're just desires at this point. Build lots of shelving, lots of cabinets. I hate drawers. Don't, don't put drawers or like doors on any of your cabinets. That's one tip. Cause you just lose, you'll lose everything if you do that. So I just try and keep everything as open as I can. Just open shelving where you can see exactly what's on each shelf all the time or else you're just constantly squaring and trying to open up drawers. Sure, you got dust issues with open shelving, but whatever, it's a wood shop, man. There's dust everywhere. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Most of these answers can be found on Google. Could you make a wood buying guide so we won't be screwed over price wise? Wood is expensive. Wood here is probably as expensive as it gets anywhere in the world where I live on Vancouver Island because we're on an island, which means we don't have a lot of options to go anywhere else. So everybody that sells wood here sells it for insanely high prices. Like this oak that I bought for my, um, for my fireplace cost over $8. Hey, thanks Jared. Uh, what are good tools for beginners? Um, obviously, you just need to get yourself a mallet and a couple Japanese hand saws. I have a bunch available on my Amazon store. You can find them on the tool store on my website. Um, but you want to start with a good Ryoba saw, like ripping, cross-cutting saw, two-in-one. That's probably like, just get that. That's your first tool if you don't have any tools. You also want to have a couple good chisels, one smaller, one big. Um, wow, thanks, Kristen. Um, and uh, you don't need a ton of tools. Um, start a project, it was what I tell everybody, start a project and see what you need to get it done. Like the absolute you know, basics of what you need. You'll usually need a saw, you'll usually need a jack plane or a hand plane of some kind and a couple of chisels. And sure, you'll have to work really hard if that's all you have. Um, but I don't buy tools before I've started a project because I've done that before where I'm just like, oh, that would be super handy, it's on sale, and I go and buy it, and then it sits in my shop and I never use it for like two years because it was just, it wasn't a necessary tool that I needed, right? So only buy tools as you need them, as you're building a shop and you're, or as you're building a project and you're just like, I can't finish this project unless I have you know this chisel or whatever. Then you go out, buy it, put it in your toolbox, start the next project. If you need another tool, go buy it, right? Consider a Viking inspired hand. Oh my gosh! Okay, I'll, I'll fill you guys in on this because we're live or whatever. But I was build. I was gonna build a hot tub, like I said in a, little, a past video, like a big cedar wood hot tub, Viking style or whatever. And uh, and so I was gonna buy the cedar for that. Build that before the winter. And this guy contacted me. He saw one of my videos, and he he's a hot tub builder in California. And he's like, Hey, I'll send you a hot tub for free. A beautiful red cedar hot tub that's what he built his company's called Roberts hot tubs and I'm still trying to get the freaking thing from him he was gonna drive it up to Washington I was gonna go meet him over the border pick it up bring it here and set it all up first he was gonna bring the whole thing here but then he had issues getting across the border and all this sort of stuff I was just like oh my gosh so it, this is going on months now I'm trying to get this thing that he wants to just give me for free and I'm just like oh my gosh a free hot tub how amazing would that be right but at this point, I'm just kind of like, I haven't heard from him in the email. 
I've been emailing them like, hey, when are you coming up to Washington to you know visit your brother? I was going to meet you there and get the thing, right? And so I haven't heard from him. Maybe he's on a business trip or whatever. But it seems like it just keeps getting pushed back, pushed back. I can't get you know this thing. And so I'm at this point, I'm like, I could have built the hot tub, had it all set up, been using it for a couple months by now. Um, so I'm getting to the point now where I'm just like, you know what? Honestly, I'm just going to buy this heater and build it myself. Uh, if uh, this doesn't happen like this month, but we'll see. So there is a samurai biking hot tub video coming in the near future. Okay. Oh, why do they disappear like that? Sorry. I'm trying to. Jake Thompson. Wow. Thanks a lot, brother. Uh, just saying thanks for inspiring me to start my own channel. Yeah. Get on it, bro. Get on it. That's all I did, man. That's all I did. Was one day I was just watching all these other guys like Wrangler Star, and I just thought, you know what? These guys are doing it. I can do it, and here we go. Half a mil subscribers later, right? Okay. How do you feel about electric pop-up for my bandsaw and drift drill press? Um, like a like pop-up from your bench or something? Um, guys, don't get carried away with with the uh, kind of knick-knacky ideas. Uh, first off, when you have a workbench, it's always covered in tools. So a lot of guys have messaged me and be like, oh, what if I built a table saw into my workbench or I built this and router into my workbench? I'm like, uh, okay, but you're constantly going to have to clear your workbench off where you're working in order to use that tool. So it's going to just be a pain in the ass. You want your workbench to be a bench for working on and then you want to have all your tools separate from that. I know a lot of you guys are like space issues. Okay, well, if space is an issue, that's what you got to do. Uh, but personally, I try and keep all my tools doing their own thing. I'm not into multifunction tools. They usually never work as well as a dedicated tool, a dedicated bandsaw, a dedicated drill press, that sort of stuff. But, you know, if you got only so much space and money and you got to buy that sort of stuff, then make do. But just don't expect that it's going to be nearly as good as having something that's dedicated to the work because it just won't be, right? So, wow, thanks, Angel. You're welcome for the, uh, for the videos. Wow. And you guys, so many of you guys here, 868 people is crazy. Do, 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 do. do gingers have souls? Yes, they do. I have a couple of ginger friends, and they are the salt of the earth type people, okay? All right. Any advice to get started as a successful contractor in BC? Um, I guess I could consider myself a successful, successful contractor. I made a good living, but. Depends where you are in BC as well, uh, but it's always going to be very competitive here because there is a lot, a lot, a lot of trades everywhere you go in Canada. So if you don't have the skills and the tools and people that you know can help you get projects done, you're going to struggle as a contractor in BC um, unless you do really specialized work, which is what I did, specialized finishing and stuff like that. So. Um, it, my advice would you be stay away from framing and all these kind of generic um, parts of the trade and specialize in something that people don't really have the patience to do, like finishing work or restoration work on character homes and that sort of stuff. Get into the details. Uh, eventually, it takes up a lot of time and investment in, in learning how to become a specialist in certain aspects like joinery and reproduction type work. But once you have the work and people know that you're around, you'll have all the work kind of a thing. So. You'll never be without work. Whereas if you're trying to bid on people, you know, jobs and with other framers and doing concrete work and stuff, it's like that stuff doesn't take a ton, ton of skill to learn how to do that. And so there's always going to be an insane amount of people competing for that work. So you want to compete for the work that, you know, only a few people are bidding for, right? It takes a bit of time to get there, but specialize. That's how every trade works in medical field. You know, if you want to become, you know, the best paid doctor, you become a surgeon or you become, you know, whatever. You specialize in certain things, right? So don't just be a generic do-it-all carpenter. You'll make the least amount of money that way. Uh, getting that. Oh, thanks, Jared. Okay, in there now. What's the best way to get into woodworking with wood as a career? Well, start a YouTube channel. <laughs> Honestly, you guys, a lot of people, myself included, had this kind of pipe dream of just like, oh, man, if I just get all these awesome tools start cutting joinery and building furniture, right? Everybody's gonna wanna buy the furniture, it's so beautiful. Guess what, everybody wants to buy the furniture because it's so beautiful. Nobody can afford it. Nobody can afford it. Uh, till this day, I've only sold maybe half a dozen pieces of furniture. 
Um, not that I've been looking for to sell furniture at all. Um, but before I started this YouTube channel, I had sold like one piece of furniture to a, a close friend because people just can't afford to pay what it's worth. Uh, in this kind of consumer driven age, everyone goes, oh, well, I can get a table on Ikea for $1,500. I'm like, oh, well, this table is worth $5,000 because I put so much work into it and look at all the exposed joinery and all that sort of stuff, right? People go, oh wow, yeah, it is beautiful, but I can't afford that, right? And so nobody ever buys your furniture. So um, what you need to learn about business is that business is all succeed, succeed or fail depending on influence, right? So starting a YouTube channel, gaining influence, gaining a reputation and reaching a lot of people now has allowed me to be like, I can do whatever I want with woodworking. I can make a living, you know, doing, you know, five different things, selling plans for projects, or I could, if I want to, I could bring on clientele and be like, Hey, I'm, I'm actually think, and I am thinking about, you know, starting to take on commissions and building stuff to sell on my site, you know, small stuff like build yourself toolkits, you know, where I cut out all the pieces and send it to you in the mail and you assemble it all. And so you get to be a part of the project and it's fun, right? So there's, there's all sorts of different ways to become a woodworker in a career as a career, but it's not just uh, oh I just if I build it they will come they won't. Um, you have to get online. You have to have a website. You have to have a blog. You have to have an Instagram thing. You have to get your work out there and build up a reputation for yourself, which is way easier. It's easier to do, you guys, in this day and age than it was before the internet and all the social media. Uh, but just saying, it takes years. It takes years to kind of build up that sort of stuff. I've been really lucky with my YouTube career. It's happened really quickly in the last two and a half years or whatever I've been doing it full time. But um, you just have to put in a ton of work, let me tell you. It's not just go to woodworking school, get your joiner's ticket or whatever and start building furniture. It's while you're at joiner's school, you have to start an Instagram, you have to start a YouTube, you have to start doing all this sort of stuff and showing people what you got, building a name for yourself. Then people go, oh yeah, Samurai Carpenter. Wow, you own a piece of, you own a table from him? That's awesome, right? So that draws people to want to buy your stuff, right? Wow. Thanks a lot, brother, for your contribution. Samurai included, love the passion, dedication you have. Thanks, I can't really pronounce that word, your name, es, Eschaton. <laughs> I'm a wood turner, how much turning do you do? Um, as much as you've seen on my channel. <laughs> I built, I turned a few bowls on the lathe that I got. I turned a, an urn for my uh, for my cousin. They lost their daughter to uh, spinal muscular atrophy and I, I was able to do an urn for her ashes. That was probably one of the most insane monumental projects I've ever done in my life. There's a video on that if you want to see it. It's a definite tearjerker. Um, but other than that, I don't do, I've got a whole bunch of burls and I plan on turning, but I just haven't had the time because I've got so many other projects going. One day, I'm going to be popping these burls on. I've got a few, here's a bowl I'm working on here. <coughs> I turned this out of, as you can see, it's been sitting on the shelf for a while. I turned this out of London plane, the same that I'm building my table out of. And it's pretty awesome. It's kind of got some little inclusions from the barky edge still. I turned it when I was green. I put it in a bag of sawdust and put it on the shelf, but uh, it's still cracked on me. So I put some epoxy. So it was kind of the center of the, tr of the branch or whatever. So I got to fill up that with epoxy. I think it's kind of, it's, yeah, it's definitely not like perfectly round anymore. It's kind of oblong shape, which is cool. So I'm just gonna sand it out, finish it, and kind of leave it rustic so I'll have an awesome kind of salad bowl for, for my wife eventually. But yeah, I've got a few other little bowls that are sitting around. I, I don't know anything about wood turning, so I've just been like figuring stuff out with finishes and epoxy and stabilizing spalted wood and sort of stuff. It's a whole trade and art unto itself, and I definitely love it, but um, haven't made a lot of time for it. All right, what do we got? Oh yeah, another super chat. Jason, thank you, my brother. One week, okay, one week class, I'll bring the beer. I definitely, um, there are plans to do that. Um, I'm gonna be launching the Samurai Woodworking School in the next couple of months, which will be an online school. But from there, um, I'm also gonna be trying to do uh, so a few courses. Uh, I've got a little timber frame firewood shed that I know I could use some help on. And so I was thinking of running some class, maybe a weekend workshop, we could probably turn that thing out so stay tuned it's gonna happen you guys i'm just trying to get all the uh the organization skills the time to organize and plan and you know get payment and 
schedule and you know correspond with people takes so much time like I need an assistant to kind of help me with that sort of stuff and that's what I'm working towards with the samurai school is to be able to get people um, get enough income coming in through the subscriptions from this school and the videos that I make for that that I'll be able to hire on some staff and help expand into all sorts of different areas of you know actually facilitating workshops here at the shop and then moving on to building a huge school on a property one day you know who knows where it's going to go but that's the goal right are you taking resumes for other instructors well one day not at the moment um I can make things with just a butter knife. Yeah, okay. I'm sure they look really nice. <laughs> How's the cottage going? I still have to finish the, um, I still have to finish some of the exterior on the cottage. I did a little bathroom addition, right? You guys saw that in the tiny house. I still have to trim and finish some of the shake around the windows is out there and some fascia boards. But it's mostly, for the most part, it's finished. It's finished on the inside, a little bit of shelving work to cover over a hot water tank. Um, I haven't done anything the last few summers because I've just gone down there to uh, tool vest. Yes, I'll get to the tool vest. I've just been going down there as a vacation. And before, I used to take all my tools down there and work as my vacation because I couldn't afford to just take time off. But now that the YouTube channel's going and everything, um, I've been able to actually have a vacation. So this summer I'm gonna go down there and finish though because it's been driving me crazy spending the summers down there and not seeing all this unfinished work. It's been like, oh, I wish I had my tools. So I'll be getting on that this summer. Um, as far as the tool verse vest is concerned, I had a contact with a guy who was gonna build me a prototype and it fell through, nothing ever came of it. Uh, I think he had some personal health issues with some family members. So I didn't want to press it too much. And so I'm kind of back at square one. This, maybe this is a good opportunity. If any of you guys know anybody, have connections, uh, somebody had contacted me from Atlas 49. They make like tactical nylon tool vests for the construction industry and all that sort of stuff. Uh, maybe if they're watching, they, they want to contact me. If you know anybody that works for these companies or you know anybody in the leather manufacturing business, leather garments, that sort of stuff, have connections and other places in the world, shoot me a message on Facebook because I'm really wanting to get this vest going. Uh, I've got a bunch of revisions I'm going to make to the second version that I built. Um, you can see the video for that on my video page. Uh, but yeah, I want to get that out there. That's kind of my other big thing that's on the back burner is like, oh my gosh, can we get this tool vest into production? That would be huge to be able to sell that and manufacture that and help people, you know, enjoy building a lot more and be a lot more efficient because they have all their tools on them in a comfortable way and it's not pulling the pants down, hanging their ass crack out and just, I hate tool belts. Don't get me started, okay? What's your favorite smell of wood? That would be Alaskan yellow cedar, or just yellow cedar. It's the most beautiful smelling wood you've ever smelled. Um, so if you ever get your chance to get your hands on a piece of yellow cedar, take a shaving off of that with your sharp hand plane and just smell it. Oh, it's glorious. Any folding work? Folding workbench ideas. Um, my channel. My channel is, um, in that sense, there's so many channels out there that of guys that are like really innovative and coming up with all these gadgets and stuff, Wandel, Matias, or whatever his, his shtick is, is building all these kind of weird, crazy engineering projects. Um, and I just can't hold a candle to half these guys out there and all the ideas they come up with all their gears and computer programs. And so many of those things require, you know, an understanding of computer software and all this sort of stuff that I'm just not, literate with that well you know I know how to design stuff on SketchUp but as far as mechanical stuff I am I am a schmuck um, sure I can figure stuff out if I wanted to but right now I have the space all my videos are based off of like basically practical stuff that I need in my own life and I have enough space in my shop that I don't have to build um, any kind of complex folding stuff that I have to put away I do have some plans for like you know a, a big glue up table where it'll have folding legs where I can maybe hang it up on the roof here so it's out of the way when I need it to be or put it up against the wall but it'll basically just be a, a table with some legs that swing out on either end uh, nothing too complicated right so um, yeah I just try and stay away from the uh, kind of funky gadget type woodworking it's, it's cool some of that stuff is it's just not 
not what I need in my life. I need furniture for my home now that I've you know got a dining room and my table's way too small and my family's growing, all this sort of stuff, right? So I just build stuff that I need. And I'm hoping that that appeals to people, right? Is that they just be like, okay, well, what's the samurai? Oh, he's building a table that he needs. Okay, great, I need a table, right? So that's just how I build stuff on my channel. It's all based off of my actual need, not kind of what I think would get a lot of views. Um, What's the best way for a novice to find rad wood on the cheap? Uh, like Virage sale or like Craigslist. I scan that sort of stuff for free wood and reclaimed wood where people are tearing down barns and whatever. But usually if a piece of wood, wood is really beautiful, whoever has it knows that it's worth money and you're gonna have to pay for it. You can, you can score some deals sometimes, but usually it's on like a log. So if you don't have a mill or something like that, then you're not gonna get the wood out of it, right? So if you don't have the tools to process raw wood, um, finding nice pieces of wood finished or ready to use, it's gonna cost you money. I've never been able to find anything significant uh, for cheap. Um, will you be making Kumiko? I do wanna try my hand at Kumiko. I've got, uh, I need to make like a little sofa, bookshelf, um, table to go up underneath my TV. Um, and I want to build some little cabinet doors with some little Kamiko panels. For those of you guys who don't know what Kamiko is, it's a, it's like a Japanese lattice, like a really fine lattice with beautiful designs and patterns and stuff like that. I know nothing about it, but I follow a guy on Instagram who does, you know, a bunch of it and, and there are videos and stuff out there. So I'm going to try my hand at it for sure in the next year. Um, do, 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 do. Deck railing for the barn, yes. That's my other uh, thing for this um, this year is my my uh, my words for this new year. My my resolutions are the number one word is discipline. Uh, I need to get out of bed earlier, just get the cracking, um, so I get as many hours work in as I can every day. That's my mission this next year. And the other word uh, I've got is finish what you started. I've got so many unfinished projects here, and I keep starting new projects. Hashtag dining room table. Um, so while I finish the dining room table on the weekends and stuff, I'm going to be trying to finish all these start projects. I'm still not done the siding on my barn. I started like a year ago. I'm still not done the railings on the deck that I built onto my barn, uh, which I built like a year ago. And I'm still not done trimming out the inside of my windows that I installed in my shop here. Like there's just everywhere you look on my property right now there's unfinished projects boards missing here and there and it's so close they're all like at 90 percent so that is going to be my mission to just go back and finish all these projects um and get that dealt with so i'm just not like losing my mind everywhere i look i'm just like oh my god i haven't finished that i'm a failure oh my god I you know so it's just like i need to get get the just stuff dealt with, get my yard, my house functioning. And then once all those projects are finished, you know, and I can look around and be like, yay, then I can start a new project and not be super stressed about having a hundred unfinished projects. Do you have any recommenders? Do you know channels, books and anything? Um, I've got a video on my top favorite books. It's a really old video. Scroll through my video page. Uh, it's all my favorite books on woodworking and design and, that sort of stuff and really good resources so check those out and get all those on Amazon like I did and read through them a million times and you will learn so much Samurai is a finisher that's right 2018 I'm the finisher <laughs> yes this is true the shoemaker's son does go barefoot but I'm about to finish my renovation so my house will be done on the inside the outside not quite yet Okay, make a gun stock. I would, I would like to do that. I'm, I love guns. I don't. I only have a few guns that my opa gave to me that are kind of more antiques and relics that I don't use. Um, but I could get into that. I could get into making a gun stock. It'd be fun. I would need like the parts for the rifle and stuff though to make the whole gun. So I'd have to buy a gun. Ooh, I'll talk to my wife about that. Probably gonna shut me down. All right. <sighs> Yes, I will. I will feel so good if I get all those projects done. Samurai is a boss. Thank you. I am the boss of my own life. Maybe I'll be somebody else's boss one day. Do, 
do, do, do, do, do, do, do. You guys, everybody keeps asking me about starting their own business, starting their own business um, with woodworking. What I've seen succeed um, just through my own little travels is obviously people that build like small, affordable stuff, okay? So if you want to start a business that you can make a lot of money at and you got access to some really cool chunks of wood, start a wood turning business where you're just turning out bowls and you could, because you could pump out two or three bowls in a day um, if you're good. And then you can sell those for a couple hundred bucks a piece, right? Make a decent living. Um, a lot of, you can put that on Etsy. You can ship those around the world fairly easily. Um, you can Instagram, build a huge following for your work on Instagram. You have to be on social media if you want your woodworking business to succeed. If you're basing your business off just local demand, you're gonna have a hard time succeeding. You have to be able to sell internationally. Every market now that is excelling or succeeding is an international market. Being able to sell stuff to other people in other parts of the world um, because I'm successful on YouTube because I have people all over the world watching my videos and I make money through the ads that play on all those views that are constantly coming in from all over the world, right? So you have to reach the world with whatever you are doing. Uh, that's my kind of only advice. If you base your business off of only local demand, you're always gonna just be getting by, okay? so. You gotta dream big, come up with an idea of something that you can market to the whole world, whether it's videos on how to do stuff like I do, or selling project products that are small and easily shippable and you know, that people are really into, right? Okay. Do, 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 do. Plans to build your own timber frame structure. Like school, yes, that's what I am planning to do, is build my own school in the timber frame style. Now, the dream is massive at this point. It'll require like millions of dollars, uh, which I don't have, but it's gonna happen one day. And let this be known, all of you guys who watch this video, years from now, when the school is built, and you guys are just like, what, how the heck did this happen? You can go back to this video and be like, I remember the samurai saying like, he called it, this is what he's gonna do, and he's gone out and done it. It's, it's just gonna happen. It's going to require a lot of people, a lot of money, all that sort of stuff will come in the next few years. Um, so just so you know, uh, get excited and see what you can do, you know, whether you can come out and help me build it. I'm going to have to, you know, bring in big teams of people to put on classes and build this big timber frame. We'll have a big barn raising Amish style and it'll be the greatest thing ever. It's already, I've already seen it. It's, it's a prophetic dream. It's going to be amazing. But um, right now I'm not building a timber frame school. I'm building a timber frame firewood shed. That's my project for this year. Um, one of my projects for this year. And then from there, it'll grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I'm gonna build a big dry, wood drying shed. I've got space down here um, where I can dry slabs and start stockpiling timbers to build my big school. Who knows, right? Do you watch Jimmy? Uh, occasionally I do. I check in on Jimmy DeResta and uh, what he's got going on there. He's building himself a big epic shop to hopefully, you know, do classes and have people. And he's got his own little school going on over there. Uh, maybe one day, but his shop looks amazing. Uh, it's more of just like an industrial, get it up kind of shop. Um, I want my shop to be like beautiful timber frame joinery from floor to ceiling, which will be a lot more expensive and you know, take a lot more time to build. So it's just kind of like, ah, I could buy one of those like prefab structures and, you know, get a piece of land and throw that up and it would work, but it's just not Samurai style, you know? You gotta do things hardcore every time. It's just the way that I am. So I'm planning on that, obviously taking more time, but Pure, li Pure Living for Life has a great build suit. Yes, they do. I've been following Pure Living for Life. Those guys are cool. Couple of noobs just getting out there, buying land, building their off the grid little house and timber frame. They did an awesome group project and um, uh, some school from out east came over and did a big course and they uh, cut their frame with like 20, 30 people and put it up. So that was an awesome example of building as a community and working with different resources and different groups of people, timber framers and getting a project done affordably. Um, so th that's exactly what I want to do to build my uh, school slash home on my own property that I'll have one day. Um, but yeah, it's great if you want to follow them, Pure Living for Life on YouTube. Uh, just a couple of beginners, but they're going at it and working their tails off and they're fun to watch, fun to watch videos. Okay. 
Are you still doing commission work? No, I haven't been doing any commission work, but I would like to. I'm kind of at the point where I've got a few commissions lingering. Uh, I've got three tables to build, and I could get some more work if I had some help kind of a thing. So I'm at the point where I'm like, do I hire somebody who has some woodworking skill that can do these projects for me while I continue to work on my projects? And we can kind of just churn them out in the background and then um, maybe eventually have a couple of guys, right? Like a laborer and a, a woodworker and we're all working together and getting projects done as well as, you know, continuing to do what I do on a daily basis, right? And building new projects for around my own house here. So that's a possibility, hopefully, in the new year. Uh, it'll all just be d dependent on financials coming in and being able to support, you know, paying employees, which costs a lot of money that I don't have right now. <laughs> okay. Do you like Lee Nielsen hand? I've got a Lee Nielsen low angle rabbiting block knife. It's one of my favorites. I'm not a fan of the A2 tool steel blades. The Veritas planes now are coming out of Lee Valley, which is a Canadian company. They've got uh, blades that are made out of this new proprietary alloy called PMV11 steel, and it is just superior to A2 tool steel in every way. Holds an edge longer, it sharpens just as easy, and it's just beautiful steel. It's like my new favorite. So I'm thinking about getting a set of chisels done in that, and then actually doing a comparison video with a bunch of my high-end Japanese chisels to see um, the alloy how it holds up to Japanese steel and the heat treatment process that they do there. I'm thinking it would be very similar, if not better than maybe even Japanese tools. So they're all out of stock right now, but when I can get a set of those chisels in the next couple months, I think March, I'm gonna do a Japanese chisels versus Canadian made chisels kind of video, see if uh, see if Japanese chisels are you know better than every other chisel out there, or if the Canadian chisels are just as good, maybe better. It's gonna be a big head to head kind of competition. It's going to be cool. Uh, I'm trying to get uh, Alec to send me out a little chunk of steel so I can make a folding knife as well. Collaboration type video. Um, I haven't really been in contact with any other YouTubers because um, there aren't any YouTubers on the West Coast that are close by me. I'm up in Canada. Uh, with, there are YouTubers around. I don't know about DIY YouTubers. But the closest ones are like maybe down in Oregon. I know Wrangler Stars in Oregon. There's a few others maybe in the Oregon area. The Pure Living for Life people are down in Oregon, I believe. Um, and then there's California's got a million of them. But I just don't travel that far south and I've got a family. So unless people can come to me, I can't really do like a face-to-face -face collaboration. And I haven't been connected with a lot of people um, as far as you know sending and doing collaborations. Alex Steele was the only one that really worked out really well and I'm open to doing more collaborations but it's kind of got to be the right situation it's hard it's hard to do hard to figure out ba, 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 ba. I have millions of you some oh, that'd be great sure send me a PayPal okay are you going to Maker Central a lot of people have been asking me that uh, it's in the UK in May I think uh, there's a big maker gathering or whatever I would love to go to that um, I don't think I'll be able to have the finances to do a trip like that, as well as leaving my wife with our four kids um, and my oldest son has special needs. That was, I did my trip to Japan and she, you know, handled that for seven or eight days. And so I don't know if I'm gonna put that on her again. And I don't think, I, I definitely couldn't afford to bring my whole family. That would just be cr crazy. So that's a bummer. I would love to go. I know all these other big makers are going. I wanna meet all these people, but, uh, don't see it in the works this year. Maybe another one. Maybe next year. Uh, yes. Okay. Ba, ba, ba. Pure Living for Life is in Idaho. Okay. Did not know that. Why do you keep asking the dumb question? I'm pretty far. What hair products do you use? <laughs> Clearly, I don't really have much hair product here. This is called Bedhead. Um, got out of bed a couple hours ago, and this is what I'm rocking. I just use some hair paste or whatever most of the time. But I don't even know what it's called, so this isn't a hair channel. 
Okay, guys, we're drawing close to an hour, and it's been fun hanging out with you, so I'm gonna take a few more questions, and then we're gonna peace out. So thank you so much for watching, you guys, all you guys. Crazy how many people tuned in. Uh, thank you so much for all the super chat guys, guys that contributed money to, um, to say thanks or whatever. I really greatly appreciate that. It helps me pay my bills. Uh, so thank you so much to you guys. Um, I want to make sure that I've got... Uh... Okay, there was one here. Why do you choose water stones over diamond plates for sharpening? I have diamond plates as well. Thank you, Kirsten. Good question. Um, I've got... I use a diamond plate to flatten all my water stones as well as I use it for taking chips out of the blade. Uh, you can get diamond stones up to a fairly fine grit. I've seen them up to 1200 grit, but I don't think you can get diamond plates that go much finer than that. And I've got water stones that go up to 30,000 grit. So the polish that you get from a water stone is gonna be infinitely superior to a diamond stone, but a diamond stone is great um, and they cut really fast uh, for just basic sharpening. If you just wanna get your chisels sharp so they function, if you wanna get them crazy, scary samurai sharp, you gotta use water stone and go into higher grits, 5,000, 8,000, 12,000, 16,000, 30,000. Um, and that's like a mirror polish, which I haven't been able to see any stones that can get a mirror, diamond stones that can get a mirror polish. So I use my diamond plate um, for taking chips out of the blade because they cut super fast and then remove, remove a lot of material. And then I use them to keep my water stones flat as well. So that's, so I do use both but the water stones obviously give a superior polish. And I use Shapton water stones. If you wanna check them out on eBay or they're available everywhere. I've got links in my tool store on my website um, for those. And they're pretty affordable. I think 50 to 80 bucks a stone and they last pretty much your whole life. So you don't have to replace them, right? I'm trying to figure out. Deadpool collab, okay, that'd be that'd be cool. Some people have called me. Um, what's that guy's name? What's that actor's name? Deadpool. Can't believe it. Blanken. But some people say that I look like him. Ryan Reynolds, that's his name. Some people say I'm like he's my doppelganger or whatever. And we have similar personalities, kind of highly sarcastic, snarky, egotistical personalities. So it, we we could do a fun collab, I'm sure, if he was into woodworking. His name's not Brian Gosling, gosh. All right, thanks for the free live stream. You are welcome, guys. 58 minutes, we got two more minutes. Do Japanese chisels need to be finished when you get them? Yes, well, they just need to be like finished honed. Uh, they come, they usually come sharp, depends on the maker, but usually you wanna put a little extra edge on them, they just kinda come ground. They come polished to like a thousand grit, usually, maybe, 2,000 grit. Um, so yeah, if you wanna put a really nice mirror polish on your ch chisels, uh, Japanese chisels, you'll have to do that yourself when you get them. Ba, 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 ba. Do you strop after your stones? Um, I strop my carving chisels because the curves and the gouges, uh, the leather kind of bends to the shape of the chisel and, and puts a really nice edge on them that way. So any kind of curved blades I use a leather strop for because that does do a really nice polish with some honing compound. Uh, but as far as straight chisels are concerned, the strop is... From what I've heard, a leather strop is only about 8,000 to 10,000 uh, grit com relative comparison. So I've got stones that go up to 30,000, so I don't really need to strop after I've polished up to you know, 12, 16, 30,000. Um, as well as a leather, um, because it's thick, right? When you push the chisel onto it, the leather compresses and then um, kind of will roll over that edge right when as you push the chisel down into the leather and drag it along the leather is kind of going to round that edge it'll still put a good edge on it but it doesn't it's not a straight edge right it's actually kind of putting a bit of a round like a micro bevel on the very cutting edge of your chisel which it, it's not a big issue uh, but i just like my chisels just to have that keep that sharp angle kind of a thing so if you keep stropping over time it's going to kind of round your edge i don't think it'll it definitely won't dull your edge but with a straight chisel, it's just not necessary if you can use a water stone kind of thing, right? More live stream, please. Thanks for all your videos and pics. Yeah, I would, if I have the time to do some live streams, maybe I'll do, uh, maybe I'll try and do a few more. It's great. People have been, you know, contributing a lot of money. Thank you so much for all our super chatters. Sorry if I missed any of your questions, guys. Um, I'm just 
trying to figure out how to go back and check, but only the last super chat will come up. I can't read through them all, which is really annoying. Um, but and it, I can't I can't figure out how to you know process and look at all these comments unless I'm doing a live stream. I don't want to just sit there trying to figure out how to fix stuff while I'm doing a live stream. It's really frustrating. But uh, maybe I'll watch some videos on how to check that because uh, I know there are some videos out there that teach you all these little things with the live streaming. But thank you so much for watching, you guys. Uh, it's been awesome. And um, I will catch you in another live stream. Maybe we'll do maybe we'll do like a a once a month live stream for everybody, and then everybody else. Um, other than that, I'm going to do my weekly live streams, which are just for my Patreons supporters. Um, and those people are actually you know contributing to help me out, you know, from their own pockets. And so I greatly appreciate all the support that I've got from people that are just watching for fun and, and you know, that helps support me in a, in a small way and I appreciate that as well. Um, but obviously I gotta make time for the people that are actually taking money out of their pocket and, you know, helping keep this channel alive, keep it going. Um, because I, those people, I depend on those people and I'm so grateful to all you guys. So, thank you so much for watching, guys. It's been fun. Uh, we'll do another live stream. I'm gonna try and do it more often. Um, it's just, I got four kids and a family and a million projects on the go, so it's just a matter of timing. Anyways, don't forget, also, if any of you guys are watching any local yokels, we're doing a meet and greet on the 13th. I said the 16th in the last video. It's the 13th, Saturday the 13th of January. I was looking at my December calendar and I got the days mixed up, but it's, it's next Saturday. Um, January the 13th, if you want to come out, 9 o'clock, Crooked Goose Pub. Um, and yeah, we'll see you there. I'll put a post on Facebook as well so that I don't have people showing up on the 16th, which is a Tuesday. I won't be at the pub on Tuesday, okay? I uh, only do my drinking on the weekend. And I don't really drink that often. Anyways, been fun, guys. Catch you next time. Summer out.